Sorry. Hey guys, now this is gonna be a little bit different to what I'm used to doing. So but I'm gonna do my first, start off my first top 10. So let's talk about opinions. I have them, you have them, we all have them, but but we don't always agree on them. But that still doesn't stop trolls from being breaks on the internet because you have a different opinion from theirs. So here are my top 10 unpopular opinions. I'm gonna try to explain in great detail why I have these opinions. So yeah, let's start the list. I'm sorry if his list is a little bit tame with saying, I'm actually one of the few people that like the Werehog levels in Sonic Unleashed, but I can see why people don't like them because they tend to drag on, and the battle music can get really repetitive and drown out the great soundtrack that Sonic Unleashed has to offer. But I hear that people think it's the worst gameplay style in the Sonic franchise. I mean, it's not the best, but it's definitely not bad. If anything, I think the Wii version is worse. I mean, sure, the levels are shorter, but at least in the HD version, the Werehog has a variety set of combos it can pull off. In the Wii version, just the same A and B combos. Honestly, I just prefer the HD Werehog levels over the Wii version because the Wii version is just so boring to me. But when the Endsane trilogy came out, it was called Dark Souls of Platformers. Just because journalists forgot that some games don't hold their hands, even comparing the controls to the Binding of Isaac. For this pick, I think the Endsane controls are pretty great. I personally love the Endsane trilogy's controls. I prefer the shorter air time with jumping. Sure, it makes levels like the high road very infuriating, but it's still better than the dopey jumping, the heaviness of Crash, and the butter beneath his shoes when from the original Crash 1. I mean, the hitbox can be highly questionable at times, but what's wrong with a little added challenge? I had more in Crash 1 for miscalculated jumps and heavy fixes from anything from Insane. I just love how Crash falls a hell of a lot faster, and you can, and so you can't fall victim to your mistake. You can still make it back to the platform in just milliseconds. While I still don't like the ice physics in Crash 2, it's not as heavy as it was in the original. It's still slippery, but it's still pretty manageable. For this pick, I prefer CTR over Mario Kart, and I'm pretty sure you all will hear that as I hate Mario Kart, but far from it actually, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is actually my favorite kart racers of all time, but I just think they care to the different audiences. I just feel like there's more to do in CTR, like in Mario Kart, the only thing that it has going for it is the Grand Prix, Battle Mode, Online, and Time Trials. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Mario Kart's Battle Mode. Relic Races, a perfect crash platforming mechanic brought to the racing world perfectly, which are so good to get the Gold and Platinum Relics on. The Online Races and Nitro Fuel, which can be hard as balls to get first at times, but it's still a good thing trying to get better. I'm not the only one that feels this way, and don't get me wrong, I've been playing Mario Kart since Double Dash, but I just think CTR is just a little bit better. RPGs are one of the most biggest genres when it comes to gaming, and honestly, I don't really like them. Look, I'm not saying that they're bad, I just can't bring myself to enjoy them. The only RPG that I ever played was Undertale, and I still haven't beaten it yet. I know deep down that they're great games, but I just always prefer my games linear. I just always get lost unless I have help. In linear games or semi-linear games like Uncharted, Mario Odyssey, or Hell, Banjo Kazooie, they just have you do a specific mission or collect a certain amount of power moons or musical notes, and boom, done, you're off to the next level. In linear games or semi-linear games like Uncharted, Mario Odyssey, or Hell, Banjo Kazooie, they just have you do a specific missions or collect a certain amount of power moves or musical notes, and after that, boom, on to the next level. Or in Mario Odyssey's case, if you have enough power moves, you can actually skip one half of a kingdom. Don't get me wrong, guys, I love to explore. That's why I love 2D Sonic level design, but I can't really bring myself to play these kind of games, honestly. I'm actually one of the few people that like the Mario Kart games on Wii. I mean, I thought they still had the competitive spirit that the older games had. I mean, sure, some of the motion-based mini games can be very infuriating, especially Flip the Chimp, but some of the mini games are a bit random, but they're actually pretty fun at times. So the board areas can be fun, and I like the mechanic mechanics are pretty fun too, but I can understand why people don't like them. Look, I love the Nintendo Switch, it's currently my favorite gaming console right now, but what I don't like about it is the prices for the consoles, the accessories, and the games, it's just really expensive. 
I love most of the games on this system, and the execution of the idea is pretty great, but the prices for some of these accessories are so expensive. I mean, the Switch itself costs $300, and you can get a 500GB Xbox One for half that price. Look, if you were to go to GameStop and buy the Switch itself, a Pro Controller, and a copy of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, that'll be $429.99. It's not that bad, but what if you get the infamous Joy-Con drift, or you run out of space in your Switch? The console has a 32GB hard drive, which is pretty pathetic and really annoying, especially when you want to download a new da game digitally, and there's no more space to download it. And the charging time isn't really that great either. Outside the dock, you can play up to 3 hours before until needing to charge. So yeah, a new memory card that will be $45, new Joy-Cons that will be $35 each, a screen protector in case you get a wonky dock that scratches your Switch on the day you f***ing got it, that will be $9.99. And if you get tired of playing Smash, you want to play a single player game, so you get Breath of the Wild, that'll be another $60. And when you want to play online, that'll be $20 for a one year membership, so yeah, that's $634.91. Yeah, so in conclusion, screw the price tags of these things. I mean, I love the Switch, but the prices they're going for the accessories is just not worth it. You consider Sonic and the Black Knight one of the worst Sonic games of all time, and honestly, I don't know why. I mean, sure, the controls need some getting used to, but at least it's not like Sonic in the Secret Rings where you can barely control Sonic at all. I mean, I've always thought the game was okay, not the best, but not as bad as people make it out to be. Although the game's story gets a lot of criticism for being short and linear, but honestly, I really enjoyed it. It's lighthearted and goofy, but it takes itself serious when it needs to be. And some of the dialogue made me giggle. This series is meant for kids, so the cheesy endings I'm used to. So the fact that isn't exactly the best Sonic game, but I don't think it deserves all the hate it gets. Okay, this is gonna be the last Sonic opinion on this list. I don't really like Sonic Adventure 2 that much anymore. People prefer Sonic Adventure 1 over 2, but if you saw my Sonic Adventure 1 review, then you would know that I don't think either game aged that well. Don't get me wrong, I love the action stages. Sonic and Shadow control flawlessly, they feel like they have some weight to them, and when I die, it feels like it was a mistake I made. It's definitely the most posh mechanic in the Adventure series, the next stages are also a refined mechanic from Sonic Adventure 1, and it works for Eggman. He doesn't really have a reason to be in a mech, especially since he's been a perfectly capable character on foot, although both characters have very clunky controls and it feels very awkward. I suffer from unfair death from levels like Sand Ocean, especially Hidden Base, from Rouge and Knuckles. Their gameplay style is from Sonic Adventure 1, but they completely neuter the radar. Unlike Sonic Adventure 1, the radar will only pick up Emerald Shards that are near to you. It isn't that bad at first, but some levels like Mad Space are huge, and with a radar like this, levels can go on forever. I don't want to go too in-depth because I plan to review this game in the future, but I'll end with this. This game is good but not as good as people make it out to be. If you were to ask me 18 years ago if this was the best Sonic game, I would agree, but then again, there is nothing else to compare it to. Alright, come on guys, Breath of the Wild isn't that good. I'm trying to explain this the best I can without pissing someone off. Out of the four Zelda games that I've played, Breath of the Wild is one of the greatest open world games. Absolutely nails complete and total freedom like no game before it has. I love the combat system, it's really rewarding overcoming a challenging shrine. The bosses are great even when they're easy, trying to figure out how to beat these shrines they are also rewarding, and the graphics are gorgeous, especially not, as bad, especially not being as powerful as the PS4 and Xbox One. Although I can't say the same for the game's OST, I mean compared to Ocarina of Time or A Link to the Past, this game's soundtrack isn't really as memorable as those games. The only song I can remember is the title stream and the dungeon music, but I don't really think the game's a 10 out of 10 by any stretch of the imagination. The side quests don't really reward you for anything, and I just can't help but notice how fragile they made Link in this game. What also bothers me about Link is that here, he's just Link. Unlike other games, you can give him a name, but here, he's just Link. The part of the magic was to give him your name, and this would put you as protagonist, and it would be your job to save the world. With this omission, I just feel like it just less involves the player. The player is getting stronger, Link is, in the weapon system. I mean, just trying to experiment with the other weapons, and then there's just weapons where it feels like you're attacking with little of twigs because how fragile they are. And then there's a the Master Sword. Even though it's unbreakable, you can't keep on abusing it. And it really blows my mind. After going through all that crap, you think your reward is a powerful weapon, but instead, it just has some stupid weakness. 
People have come to like this system, but honestly, I can't stand it. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna piss a lot of people off just by saying this, but... I prefer console gaming over PC. Yeah, I'm one of those douchebags that like consoles over PCs. And before you type in the comments I have no goddamn idea of what I'm talking about, hear me out. Most games on PC look way better than they do on consoles, and they have a greater exclusive library of games. But why do I prefer consoles over PCs? Well, the PC I use to play games on is also the PC I also do my work on. When I'm done with a lot of homework or editing a long video, I already start laying on my bed playing Spyro United Trilogy on my Nintendo Switch, then go immediately to Steam and place AVG Adventures on my PC. Also, my PC isn't really that powerful. When I tried to download Team Sonic Racing during the winter sale last year, the game immediately went black. And when I tried to slot download Sonic Lost World, the game started lagging like hell and it felt like I was playing a f***ing slideshow. And for some reason, I can't record any games on OBS except for a couple of them. There's some games I want to do a let's play for you guys, but I can't because for some reason OBS absolutely refused to show anything. Also, I just think that using the controller is better than using a keyboard. Playing with the keyboard just feels really awkward. And I know you can use a controller on PC, but I don't have any Xbox controller and third party Nintendo Switch Pro controllers are laggy as hell. Not to mention, I had to play a lot of Sonic Adventure 1 with a keyboard, and it was just really awkward. 